Okay, ladies and gents, it's Zem back with the review on the Meteor One. Um, this is for on sale right now, currently on the EU server, I believe. Uh, so yeah, sorry, America. Um, or I should say not America. <laughs> sorry, North American server. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, one just for the EU server. Uh, I just bought this plane. I played two games in it. Um, yeah, uh, this the development of this aircraft, well, the engines actually started in 1936. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Somebody was complaining that I talked too much. Go figure, right? So we're going to try to keep these reviews a little bit shorter unless somebody else complains and wants something different, and we'll see. Um, some of my other reviews today are probably going to be a little bit longer. This one's going to be relatively short because this plane really wasn't that active, um, at least for World War II, uh, and by 1950s it was already outdated. Um, even though the plane did fly for quite a while, in fact, there is two that were still actively being used in 2013 as ejection bed testers. So go figure, it's still kicking. Um, so the engines is uh, Frank Whittle developed the turbojet engine. Um, these are his designed. Uh, so 1936 is when he was started the development of these engines. Um, the actual plane development didn't start until 1940. Uh, it wasn't equipped um, in a squadrons until 1944, uh, before it was actually actively put into service. Uh, the initial use of this aircraft was for hunting V1 bombs. Um, However, uh, they did kind of handicap this aircraft. They did not allow this aircraft over German-occupied uh, German uh, territory, so it still did not. Uh, so, yeah, it was not allowed to fly over that, so it kind of hampered its perf uh, actual World War II performance uh, when it comes to shooting down planes, which it did. I do believe it scored something around a little bit over 40-some kills uh, in World War II against other aircraft. So it did have, see a little bit of service, but it was not, like I said, not used... Uh, over anything that was any any territory that German, German, Germany occupied, it was used as photo reconnaissance aircraft, high altitude interceptor. Of course, the V1 hunting uh, was was what it was really good at because, of course, its speed. Uh, in 1945, it set a world record, I believe, at 606 miles an hour, one of the fast, obviously the fastest at the time. Um, uh, yeah, uh, was not known for its. Uh, maneuverability, but it didn't really matter because this thing went like a rocket ship up, down. Uh, yeah, it, with with those two engines, uh, it was an amazing piece of machinery in 1944 or 1945. Whether or not it have been good as the ME262, that was always a kind of uh, debate. Uh, whether which one of these would have been, uh, which one of these would have fought, who would have won. Uh, it's probably one of those deals. Uh, however, it was not really a not a revolutionary aircraft. Um, it used essentially a lot of the same look uh, and aerodynamics of the planes that already were in service. Um, I'm specifically speaking, say, about the wing. Um, so, yeah, it, it wasn't a revolutionary aircraft other than the fact that it had jet engines, but it performed, still performed quite well for uh, what it was. Uh, by 1950s, by the early 1950s, it was already starting to be obsolete uh, because of the uh, aerodynamic changes in, in the fighter aircraft at the time, uh, they were just going faster, um, higher, uh, that kind of thing. So this aircraft kind of left behind a little bit. However, it was used as a, at the end of 46, I believe, 47, it was changed into a night fighter uh, mounted with radar. Uh, it replaced, the uh, at the time, um, the Hornet and the Mosquito that were somewhat obsolete. So this was the new ver uh yeah, the new night fighter, as they would call it, um, and, and installed with a uh, radar. So interesting, you know, in that fact, it was freaking built in the thousands. Uh, it was all over the place, Syria, Egypt. Uh, it was sold to all different kinds of countries. You know, this was their first jet, essentially first jet fighter. And a lot of them were used well into the, into the 60s. Uh, before they were uh, they were completely replaced, but you know, for a starter jet, it worked out for a lot of countries that was just getting into um, the jet age. So, what do we have in game? Well, we have a quite a little monster. We have, oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, we want, yeah, these right here, four 20 millimeter Hispanos. Ah, uh, yeah, that's just ridiculous. Those things are awesome. They have effective range of 760 meters. So yeah, you can really reach out and touch somebody uh, and some nice damage when you get all 4020s really starting to smoke on it. Um, what I use, this is like I said, I only played two games in this aircraft. 
um, uh, you know, obviously I have other jet aircraft, so it's a general idea of how this thing performs against them. Um, I do like it. I actually think it's a really, really good aircraft. I mean, this is a, definitely a two thumbs up aircraft uh, when it comes to tier seven uh, with its altitude performance, uh, which isn't too shabby. I mean, it's not the best, but it, it, it'll definitely do a tier seven. Uh, not well against tier eights. You're going to lose against most battles with uh, uh, tier eight jets when you do run into them. Of course, unless you're talking about like the um, low flying yaks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you run into anything with high altitude performance, uh, this thing is not quite up to snuff. It's been the same way with the thing. You're not going to be chasing down RB-17s with this. It just does not have the <coughs> altitude performance to get up there. Maneuverability, not the best. Good airspeed, decent survivability, and it's really the guns that really make the difference. You know, uh, play it similar to, you, like, a, a heavy fighter, get your altitude, stay at altitude, uh, pick off uh, light fighters that try to climb to you, uh, knock out bombers that you can catch, you know, re relatively do not try to get down below 2,000 meters if at all possible. Uh, you know, uh, of course, that's always uh, wishful thinking because it does happen. I'm, I think in the video I spend some time below 2,000 meters. But if you can stay up above 2,000 meters, uh, just use this beautiful firepower on this thing and uh, own uh, most things around that. Tier 7, when it's top tier, it is a little beast. So, yeah, definitely two thumbs up. Uh, I, I definitely will not complain about it. So what do I got? I run my fire extinguisher, pneumatic restarter, and control surface trim. I might try to train this, change this out. We'll see how uh, I can play a little bit more. Uh, Marksman 1, or got gyroscopic gun sight. Uh, I do run improved covering too. It seemed like the first game I played it, I got the shit shot out of me. Uh, lots, of, lots of little uh, critical damage problems, so I put in this and see what uh, the difference was. And of course, 5% more to my engine tuning 3, 5% more to engine power. Uh, these are always subject to change. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. There is not a one specific um, fitting out an aircraft that is going to work for you. Uh, as you play the aircraft, of course, you might end up changing one or two things just because, uh, you know, it seems to be working better for you. Uh, however, this is my Spit for one, Spitfire 1 pilot. So I, I had, uh, yeah, aerodynamics expert, which is worthless on this aircraft. But I do have Marksman 1, and now I got my second free skill here. So I might end up... Uh, I'm not sure. That's the problem about using premium aircraft over other aircraft in your lineup. Um, it, it doesn't always work out best with this pilot skills. But I tried it out, and then, eh, it, it didn't seem like it uh, affected too much. Or, uh, we'll see. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not terribly sure if I'll leave this in the Spitfire 1 or not, or switch back this over to, uh, yeah. Or I might think I'll probably put the heavy fighters pilots in here. But I just thought I'd throw that one in there and see what would happen. So I'm going to bring up the gameplay for you guys to check out and... Uh, you guys can see what this little monster can do. Hey, ladies and gents, back with the first game in the Meteor 1. Um, yeah, I'm kind of busy today, so we're only going to do one video of the performance of this aircraft. Uh, this was actually the second game in this aircraft. I just bought it today because uh, I saw that it was on sale for the EU server, and I thought, you know what, let's give them a plane uh, or a uh, review of a plane that's uh, only offered on the EU and I got one just for offered on the NA. So um, I'm not gonna lie this thing is really good uh, in my opinion. Um, it is a light fighter of course. Uh, it does have outstanding speed and altitude performance and um, some very nice 20 millimeter uh, cannons. Four of them to be specific. Uh, so we pull in on the P-38F. We'll see if we can knock him out quick pick up the kill on the P-38F, got the P-40 here, and we're just going to clear out the cap, pull around, get a couple shells in on the P-40. Um, I think this is going to be a little bit better uh, after I change out some of the crew skills. I, I'm flying with a Spitfire 1 crew in it, so it's built a little bit more for maneuverability, um, but like I said, once I get some changes to the skill, the kills, uh, the crew skills, uh, hopefully I get a little bit better accuracy out of this thing. But I wasn't disappointed. I mean, I, I had a good time in the aircraft. Uh, with its altitude performance and its speed, and those four hard-hitting 20s, uh, yeah, it, it is a little beast at, at Tier 7. Um, especially if you're uh, uh, the top plane. Uh, this thing really does a, uh, does a wonder uh, against a lot of these fighters. Head-to-head, -head, no, P-47B, not a good idea. Flip up. Get my flap extended. Of course, I see the A7 coming, coming in hard on me. Uh, yeah, he's at 2,200 meters. We both go head-to-head, -head 
and boom, dead. <sighs> and then the 25, 26 second reload. Um, it's not looking good for the whole team. We're already down three objectives and 77 to 69. Not that I don't like 69, but 77 is better, I guess. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, a little sad sense of humor today. Um, coming back in, let's get the battle uh, up and running here. Uh, I'm not going to dick around with that objective right now. Too many red planes. Um, so we're going to boost back up. Uh, like I said, with that speed, oof, and that wonderful uh, rate of climb, um, yeah, you can get up here quickly. Uh, I'm going to pick up the A26s and the P38F. We need this objective um, somewhat quickly, right? And that's where these 420s really come in. They overheat in about five to six seconds or whatever, uh, but if you get close enough, you can put a hellacious burst of damage uh, into these planes. Pick up the P38F coming through, grab the garrison, and now I got the two bombers. And this does well. Uh, I mean, this is a heavy, heavy fighter hunter and a bomber hunter and anything with large HP pools. Uh, and of course, fuck all bots um yeah uh, i just took a smashing hit from one of my uh, bot planes uh, and now i'm gonna get wrecked by the a26b fuck you gregory uh it's one of those days you know you're just like god damn it so pick up the uh objective and now uh, i'm gonna roll on over here to see what we can do on the other one but that's about the time i noticed that we have uh, with the altitude that I'm at, I'm going to have a pretty decent time because they're picking on my two bombers up here. So that means they're going to be heavy fighters up high and I'm not going to have to worry about anything trying to turn and burn with me. So uh, I'm just going to roll on in here. I'm going to pick up some P-38Fs uh, and some uh, base defense fighters. I'm always kind of looking down because I'm never too sure uh, what I'm going to see uh, down low and I might be able to pick up quick like the Spitfire right here. Uh, yeah, he's up high and lets me jump on him quick. Um, lets me come back up here to the P-38F that's coming through. Uh, this one over here, however, is working over my bombers. And I can't have that because I'd really, really like to get him dead before the next P-38F. The guns have nice range on them. Uh, I, I love 20s just in general because of the, oh, the, the ability to reach out and touch somebody. So drop the first one P-38F. I got the A6MF5. He's uh, way to fuck up here, but I'm going to finish off the P-38F. And that leaves me with the A6M5 coming up here. And he is totally out of his element. This is way too high for him. Uh, but we are losing hard. 38 to 60 right now. Uh, they, and they're actually holding more objectives than we are. Uh, so we're going to see what we can do here. It's time to start knocking planes out. Pull back over here on the XP-65. And, and I... And you see how I, I did actually pull up. I was trying to get up out of there. That didn't work out. Too hot for me. Uh, he rams me. He dies. I die. <sighs> the world of bots. Ah, I love that. But that's one of those deals where I must, I didn't pull up quick enough. Uh, and he just doesn't care. So I died. What are you going to do? Pull back around in here. Pick up the A7M coming uh, across my uh, gun sights, which is always nice. And he's a little too busy to pay attention. Pick up the uh, quick kill on the A7M. And we've actually picked up another uh, objective. So, pick up the Spitfire coming through here. Let's see if I can knock him out quick. Uh, those 20s, when they do hit, so nice. And I'm not going to say this plane's OP, but it's very good at what it does. Uh, if you can keep the altitude up um, with that boost and whatnot, those guns will definitely... Uh, service targets rather quickly. Pick up the XP-50 coming through. He is all over. I Oh, oh this is a guy that fucking ran me. All right, so uh, pick back down on him and see what he can do. Uh, slowly but surely, knock him out. So now we're kind of evening it back up. We're 29-38. Uh, looking a little bit better for the home team. Slowly but surely, we got one more objective than they do right now. Pick up the... KI-61 coming. Go back into the vertical. Don't want to get into a low and turning fight with him. Pick up the tornado coming through over to the side, but they already got him, so I'm going to try to finish off the KI-61 because we need to kill planes. Um, yeah, this th it does well at that. Uh, big HP targets, 
uh, other light fighters that aren't paying attention. Like, for example, we got the Spitfire 1 coming across here. Oh, he dodged it. He dodged it like a madman. And my shooting kill skills today were atrocious. I had a hell of a time with just about everything I flew today. Even the spray and pay, uh, prey uh, machine guns. Pull back over on the Spitfire 5. Let's see if I can knock him out quick. Finish him off. And now we've evened it back up. 23-26. It's looking a little better. A6M5 is back up here again. <laughs> 2,000 meters. Don't know why. i 210s falling. He lost his altitude. Um, you never really have to worry about it. If you got the booster, you never really have to worry about it. You just go into the vertical, hit the uh, boosters, and just up you go and away you go, kind of like Superman at Tier 7. Pick up the uh, last Russian fighter. Now i got an A26B coming in here, and we flip this thing around. We're at 1911. It's looking a whole lot better here. Uh, let's see if we can finish off another couple enemy pilots uh, and see if we can put this thing in the bag. Um... Yeah, about 700 meters, I think, is about the 700, 750 meters range on that. Uh, really effectively, though, about 500 meters is really, really want to be at. So pick up the uh, A26B coming across here. I'm going to get you, you prick from last time. Knock out his engine. Put a couple more shells into him. That's about the time I see the other A26B coming. I'm like, how unlucky is this shit? Two of them with rear gunners. Yeah, let's see if we can put a couple shells into him. He doesn't look like he was going to turn away. Flip back up and over. Uh, let's see here. We see we get a little bit more damage in here before the game's over. Pick up the A26B Monroe. Uh, put a couple shells into him. Flip back around. Come on, come on, come on. It's 11-5, 10-5, 9-5. Tight as hell game right now. Uh, I just need to start picking up some uh, kills. Knocked down another fighter. Dropped off the negative two. And uh, we ended up with a nice, nice 18,245 nice 18, combat score.